Hi everybody, we're back with Mayor Betsy for Facebook Live. Thanks for joining us again. We've been doing this for nearly two weeks now and you guys are very faithful about tuning in. And I want to thank Mayor Jeff Williams from Arlington to be my guest today and County Judge Glenn Whitley. Thank you both for being with me. You bet. And Glad yesterday, several people <laughs> said you aren't six feet apart when I had Dr. Scribner. But all of us who've been in here have been screened for temperature and all the appropriate questions. We'd love to be six feet apart, but you couldn't see us all if we were. So I'm going to give a few updates first, and then we're going to jump into talking about the executive orders from each one of our cities and the county as a whole and what that means as it relates to the Governor Abbott's disaster declaration. Unfortunately, Fort Worth lost another resident overnight last night. Today, Tarrant County has had 383 cases and seven deaths and 23 cases that are officially recovered. Fort Worth had nearly two dozen new cases today from yesterday. We knew that number was going to escalate and you will expect to see it escalating for a while yet. We have 138 positive cases and we've had three deaths and eight cases in Fort Worth are considered recovered. Arlington has 64 cases and two deaths with two recovered. I'm truly saddened by the loss of life here. I wish we had the power to stop it, but if you'll help us stay home, we'll fight this virus. Together, we all have to do our point to slow the, slow the spread. It really is an unprecedented and an unsettling time we live in, but our community is uniting and coming together, and I believe we'll see better and better returns all the time. Also, Congress and your delegation in Tarrant County helped pass the CARES Act that provides critical funding. Tarrant County is getting $2.5 million direct, Fort Worth $4.3 million, and Arlington $2 million. And those grants can be used to fight COVID-19, everything from public testing, providing the what infamous PPE that you keep hearing about, delivering meals and helping train healthcare volunteers and many others. There are also grants to support small businesses and payroll grants out there and grants to help manufacture specific supplies for COVID. On Tuesday, April 7th, Fort Worth City Council will amend our declaration to fit in with the governor's declaration. We will change our date to April 30th. But the important thing is that we believe our original declaration and the amendments that we've added, and there it's up to five, are in substantial compliance with the governor's. So you will see a few tweaks, but not substantial changes to what we're already doing. And because the governor said if when you reach substantial community spread, that means it's an unknown source where you got the virus. Uh, when you reach substantial, then all worship services must be done in car or online. That means all of Tarrant County is now substantial spread. So all worship services are closed. If you're a business and you don't know whether you're considered essential or not, and either one of our, all three of our areas are in the whole county, go to TDEM, T-D-E-M, Dot Texas dot gov backslash essential services and you can fill out a request to have the AG rule whether you're an essential business or not. Jeff, I know Arlington voted yesterday to extend your order and made a few changes. Would you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, we moved to April the 30th and then we also uh, then moved into compliance with the uh, issues on the church. And then I, I just want to commend both Judge Whitley and Mayor Price because uh, they and their staffs worked very well with both the state and us to help us get ready because we already had a council meeting scheduled yesterday. Uh, so we were scrambling to try to make sure that we did uh, stay in compliance with the governor's executive orders. And we're very pleased to the fact that most of all of our regulations, which already were aligned uh, mm -hmm. there, uh, with the county, Fort Worth, and Arlington all staying together and, and really appreciate the cooperation there and the help. It's a great thing to be working together. Yes, you agree? absolutely. And Glenn, as the county's presiding officer, you've been helping lead this charge. And I know you've been talking to the governor and his staff and the AG just like we have, but yesterday you had a lengthy conversation 
that's going to result in some changes. You want to tell us a little bit about that? You bet. Thank you. And again, I, I just cannot say enough about the collaboration that we've had, not only with uh, hospital administrators, with the, you know, with the providers, uh, but especially among the cities um, and the county in, in this particular event as we, you know, as we face this crisis. Uh, when the governor passed the order on Wednesday, you have to remember that we have 254 counties across the state, and many of them were not under any kind of an order up until the governor issued his stay-at-home order. And so for them, it was very easy. It was not one of those things where they had to worry about looking at their plan because they didn't have one. But in those areas that did have plans, then we wanted to move very rapidly to, uh, to stop the confusion between what the governor had ordered and what we already had in place. And so uh, last night, our district attorney, as well as myself, spent over uh, almost an hour and a half with three attorneys from the attorney general's office going through page by page and line by line the plans and, and doing whatever we might need to do to tweak to make sure that they felt that we were in compliance and that we were on the same line with what, uh, what the governor had intended when he wrote his order. And because of the fact that we had all been working so closely together, when we um, sent those discussions out to the various cities um, and asked for their comments, there were very little changes that, uh, that needed to be made anywhere across the county. So that's what happens when you collaborate with one another. Uh, and we've done that since the very beginning. You know, our first priority is the health of our community. And we've worked very hard on that. We've been very good about communicating with our hospitals, with our providers, and we feel very comfortable with that. And that has to be our top priority. And it will continue to be as we go through this. There's been a lot of conversation about are we prepared for the surge? And you, if you listen to the governor's press conference today, you know that they define various levels of beds. And the, first, the fifth level is what they're calling it, was the beds within the hospitals at the current time or the possibility of, according to the governor's order, being able to come up with additional space for beds. At the, you know, he mentioned that up in this area, we had about 33% availability. When we look at what our regional advisory council has said, we're probably around the 43% level. So we're doing well in that priority. Thank you, Glenn. You know, Mayor Williams, Judge Whitley, and I, and the other big county judges and the big city mayors are on conference call. The orders that we have in place are similar to all of theirs, and that impacts about 70% of the population of Texas. So almost everyone is following the same rules now that the governor has in place on his stay at home. And it's critical that we do that. And I know all of y'all will agree with me how critical it is that people comply. There's still issue in the parks, still issues on the golf course. So pay attention to the social distancing rules and pay attention to gatherings in your neighborhood. It really will make a difference in the spread of the disease. So you know we always closed Lastly, I'll say, y'all stay safe, y'all stay healthy, and y'all stay home.